Coming up on News 3 New Mexico, the state of New Mexico has made the top 10 list for most dangerous roads and we'll have the details for you. Systems of rain and snow are pushing across the United States. Find out more on my full weather forecast. Today is World Water Day and a, U and a new UN report discusses the lack of access to clean water. That story and more right now. This is News 3 New Mexico, your local source for news, sports, and first weather. Good evening and welcome to News 3 New Mexico. I'm Chandra Benz. And I'm Paige Gard. Thank you so much for watching. A scam that has reached the city of Roswell in recent years is being seen again. According to a Facebook post by the Roswell Police Department, the phone scan is known as virtual kidnapping. The potential victim is told his or her family member has been kidnapped and a ransom is being demanded. However, virtual kidnappers have not actually kidnapped anyone. Instead, through deceptions and threats, they try to convince victims to pay a quick ransom before the scheme falls apart. Police say the best course of action is to hang up and contact your family member to ensure that they are okay. Portal City officials announced on Facebook that the city's speed cameras are now live and operational. People with violations will receive warnings for the first 30 days of operation. The two cameras go up to go up first are on Abilene Street in the school zone between 4th Street and 7th Street, and on Globe between University and 18th Street in Portales. The traffic cameras were approved last year by Portales City Council. More are expected to go up in the coming months. The state of New Mexico makes the top 10 list of most dangerous roads in America. A Georgia law firm that specializes in accident cases issued the results of a study focusing on the most dangerous states for driving in the United States. BaderScott.com ranked New Mexico as sixth riskiest place to travel in the nation. The worst place in the country, according to the study, was Wyoming, still the most dangerous state for driving, according to data from 2022 and 2023. With 2.1 million people, New Mexico has a fatality rate of 21 deaths per 100,000 people. The BNSF Railway has been conducting repairs to the tracks at the Norris Street Crossing starting today, the March 22nd. It was ex expected to conclude at 4 p.m. According to the press release by the city of Clovis, repairs will be made to the northbound outside lane and southbound outside lane of the Norris Street Crossing. Any questions or information regarding the repairs at the Norris Street Crossing can be directed to BNSF's Jay Brittenham at 742-7998. So, Hannah, you said that there was rain and snow everywhere. How are we doing? Yes, we can expect to see rain and snow on both coasts of the United States, but luckily we're not going to be seeing much rain at all in New Mexico. Uh, as you can see on the west coast, we're going to be seeing some rain pushing up from San Francisco into uh, Portland, as well as some snow through Montana. Uh, we're also going to be seeing significant rain in the southeast, particularly in Georgia and South Carolina, as well as snow pushing up into Pennsylvania. Uh, we're going to be observing high wind. I'll have more on that for you in my full weather forecast. Thank you, Hannah. New Mexico officials are delaying raising the fees at state parks after receiving hundreds of public comments, both in support and against the proposal. The proposal was intended to raise money for the New Mexico State Parks Division to aid in increased expenses and hire more staff. According to the Carlsbad Current Argus, the division canceled a public hearing scheduled for April 1st on the matter to give the agency more time to review feedback. Officials say a new meeting will be announced in the near future. The Parks Division plans to revise its proposal based on the comments received and will undertake another public comment period on the rewritten rules. The division held 12 public meetings around the state presenting a study conducted on the needs at the agency to justify raising some of the rates at New Mexico parks. Tickets for the 2024 New Mexico State Fair concert lineup are now on sale. The state fair will ta be taking place from September 5th through the 15th of 2024. The lineup for this year includes rodeo events with Chevron Professional Rodeo Cowboys Association, Extreme Bulls, and barrel racing with the New Mexico Barrel Racing Association. Along with the artist, Jody Messina, Brad Paisley, Cole Swindle, and Josh Turner, who will be performing. You can get your tickets at the New Mexico State Fair box office or online at statefair.expo.nm.com. Concert and rodeo tickets include admission to the fair. Eastern New Mexico University received $16.6 million from state legislator to fund campus improvements. The largest amount of money was $12 million to help ENMU continue the construction of the new Student Academic Services Building that is supposed to break down ground later this year. 
ENMU Chancellor James Johnston said, quote, We are grateful for the support we've received from this legislative session and our elected officials' investment in higher education, end quote. Other funds have been allocated to other campus improvements, such as Advanced Center, Center for Speech-Language Therapy and Audiology Training, expanding STEM training and research, and even a new TV signal router for KENW. Since 2001, ENMU is constantly investing in campus improvements. To view the campus master plan, visit www.enmu.edu forward slash master plan. Three people are seeking the state Senate seat in District 27. That means State Senator Greg Nybert will have two opponents in the June 4th Republican primary. Nybert, appoint, appointed by Mich Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham earlier this year to succeed longtime Senator Stuart Engel of Portales, will face competition from Roswell's Larry Marker and Elida's Pat Boone. No Democrats filed to run for the District 27 Senate seat, so it will likely be decided in June. Women's History Month lasts all throughout March, and there's a fun way to celebrate this weekend. The Eastern New Mexico University Women's Lovers for Learning Dessert Auction will take place on this Saturday, March 23rd at 6.30 p.m. The event costs $40 per person or $275 for a table of six. To get tickets, you can also scan the QR code on the screen. This auction offers a fun opportunity to get out of the house, but even better, all proceeds will go towards funding scholarships for women attending Eastern New Mexico University. You can get your own tickets for the event at www.enchantmentvineyards.com. If you're trying to find a budget-friendly and art-friendly event for tonight, look no further. Eastern New Mexico University is hosting a free community event with former MMA fighter turned artist and activist Gerald Lovato. Lovato is an interdisciplinary artist. He will show some examples of photography, painting, and mixed media work. Lovato uses his art to address issues of mental illness, trauma, suicide, and addiction. These topics can be very heavy as they touch on an individual and a communal level. The event will take place tonight at 7 p.m. at the University Th uh, Theater Center main stage. Coming up after the break, Hannah will have her full weather report for you. But first, here's a look at today's financial market. Good evening everyone, let's take a look at today's full weather forecast starting with the satellite and radar. Uh, as you can see, there's some significant rain in the southeast pushing up through Texas into Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, and even Pennsylvania, as well as some snow from Chicago pushing up through Toronto into New York. Uh, we're also seeing some rain in San Francisco pushing up into Portland as well as some snow in Montana. Luckily, skies are clear here in New Mexico where we're only seeing some minor precipitation in the northern portion of the state above Albuquerque. Uh, as you can see, sky's completely clear. Uh, what we do have to worry about is high wind warning. We're going to be observing that in all of the yellow areas highlighted. Uh, this light yellow area is a high wind warning for Donna Anna, Luna, Otero, and Sierra County until Sunday at 8 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time. Uh, we're also going to be observing a high wind watch in Curry, DeBaca, Quay, Roosevelt, and all other dark yellow areas highlighted until Sunday at 7 p.m. 
Uh, current temperatures are very pleasant throughout the state. We're seeing temperatures of 66 in Farmington, 63 in Gallup, 68 in Albuquerque, uh, 70 in Silver City, and 80 in Las Cruces. Uh, here in the eastern portion of the state, we're seeing 78 in Roswell, 67 in Portales, 66 in Clovis, and 67 in Santa Rosa. Tonight's lows are going to be a little bit chilly, however. We're seeing lows of 38 in Farmington, 34 in Gallup, 49 in Truth or Consequences, 38 in Silver City, 51 in Las Cruces, and 41 in Ruidoso. Things are just as chilly here in the east. We're seeing 50 in Amarillo, 49 in Clovis, 53 in Portales, and 52 in Roswell. Tomorrow's highs are going to be warm yet again. However, it's a great day to spend out and about. Uh, we're going to be seeing temperatures of 61 in Gallup, 65 in Farmington, 68 in Albuquerque, 73 in Socorro, 75 in Truth or Consequences, and 81 in Las Cruces. Uh, here in the eastern portion of the state, we're seeing 69 degrees in Portales, 66 in Clovis, and 68 in Tucumcari. That's going to be tomorrow's highs. Uh, as far as our seven-day forecast goes, weather is going to be quite pleasant throughout the state. Uh, it's going to be windy in Roswell with temperatures ranging between 70 and 60 degrees as far as highs and nightly lows between 50 and 30 degrees. Uh, in Carlsbad, we're seeing temperatures between 80 and 60 degrees as well as windy weather throughout the week. And in Portales, we are seeing temperatures between 70 and 50 degrees as far as highs throughout the week with lows uh, 52 on Saturday night, 38 on Sunday night, 29 on Monday night, 35 on Tuesday night, 37 on Wednesday night, and 47 on Friday night. It's going to be windy throughout the week and we're going to be seeing some cloudy weather as well. I don't know about y'all, but I am so excited that the temperatures are finally starting to act like spring. Mm -hmm. And yes. you know you know it's spring when the wind starts picking up. Absolutely. I just wish the night weather would stay just a little bit calmer. Just a little bit. Yes, I've really been enjoying the spring weather. I've seen the birds come back out, and it is just lovely. And despite the wind, I think we can expect pleasant weather. Well, that's all the time we have for right now. We'll see you right after this break. Welcome back. Spring is officially here, and for many, that means spring cleaning. But for some, getting rid of clutter is a big task. Ross Brown has more on the science behind clutter. Spring is often a time many of us get rid of unwanted stuff. But one New Mexico expert says that's harder than it sounds for people addicted to buying or keeping things they don't need. University of New Mexico marketing professor Catherine Roster has spent almost two decades researching clutter, or excessive acquisition, and people's difficulty discarding things. Her research shows more than half of all garages in the country are not being used to park cars, but instead to store the residents' clutter. We live in a culture of overconsumption. Some have called it the throwaway society, but it's really not always just a throwaway society because there are many individuals who have a difficult time throwing things away. 
One study found that a fifth of all Americans pay a monthly fee for a storage unit, on average $120 per month, and another 14 percent plan to rent storage in the future. Roster says those who live with excessive clutter should not be confused with hoarders because hoarders don't see clutter as a problem. Roster says many Albuquerque antique and secondhand stores say they see the same folks every week, always looking for a bargain or adding to a collection they already don't have room for. Later, she says people have trouble deciding whether to get rid of items, even those without sentimental value, because they fear they'll need them later. But as people age, Rosser says, that can create a significant hardship for family members. We just really need to be mindful of the burden of the things that we're carrying, not only for ourselves, but for others. And to take the steps to start making more room in our life for relationships, experiences, and less time with our stuff. She says for many people, acquiring more things is a mood enhancer but the clutter it creates can cause anxiety. It can also lead to isolation, since people living alone might feel embarrassed to have others over or feel the need to hide the clutter out of sight. I'm Roz Brown reporting. Experts say before starting to clean out the clutter, it's best to make a list of things you, that need to be thrown out or organized. That way you have a plan of action for that spring cleaning. This region of New Mexico still suffers from a water shortage. A new UN report released to mark World Water Day warns that a lack of access to clean water is threatening peace worldwide. It says that water is often a tool to target when it comes to warfare and regional tensions over water. The report says more than 2 billion people do not have access to safe drinking water. It also says 3.5 billion people lack the access to sanitation that's safely managed. And with the climate crisis, nearly one and a half billion people have been affected by droughts between 2002 and 2021. The report concludes that the world is not on track to meet the UN's goal of ensuring everyone has access to safe and clean water by 2030. On Saturday, it's time to celebrate a popular Mexican street food staple. It's National Tamale Day. Traditional tamales date back to 5000 BC with origins in Mesoamerica. They're made with a dough that's called masa that is wrapped in a corn husk or banana leaves, steamed, and then eaten directly from the package. Tamales can be sweet or savory. They can be filled with beans and rice, cheese, meats, and veggies, or sweets like fruit, caramel, chocolate, and cream. There are many ways to observe National Tamale Day. You can try your hand at making a new one with a new recipe, or take a cooking class to learn how to make authentic tamales, or grab one from your favorite street food vendor or restaurant. No matter how you choose to celebrate, be sure to share on, on social media using hashtag National Tamale Day. Coming up after the break, Donnie will have sport, the updates on all the sports world for you. Stay tuned. Hello sports fans, I'm Donnie Couch. Let's get into this week's sports. We got some eSports news today for you as Team Valorant finishes the regular season on a two-game sweep of CSU. A great end to the regular season for the up-and-coming program. Unfortunately, Team Valorant was one seed off for making the playoffs and going into the tournament. Improving on the team and players, this year has been seen as one that sets the building blocks for the future of the program overall in the years to come. 
Congrats on the eSports program and here's to becoming better in the future. March Madness is in full swing as the round of 64 kicked off Wednesday and already the NCAA has said that less than 1% of viable brackets remain on the ongoing annual bracket challenge. The tournament has already seen five upsets of lower seeded teams taking out the esteemed Blue Bloods that we have all come to watch this time. Perhaps the most shocking upset came at the Oakland vs. Kentucky game in which the 14 seeded Oakland Golden Grizzlies took out and upset the Kentucky Wildcats. An absolutely insane matchup which saw Jack Golike light it up from downtown to put up ins insane 32 points at 50% from three to lead the Golden Grizzlies to their first NCAA, NCAA tournament win in 10 years and the Wildcats, well, they're nursing their wounds. Gotta love March Madness. But not all games are always happily ended. As we saw versus the Kansas vs. Sanford game last night, it was a game mainly controlled by the Jayhawks throughout most of the first half. The 13 seeded Sanford Bulldogs were taking a beating in the first half until a run of great defense put the Bulldogs in a position to knock off the number four team in the country. They were right on the fingertips until what many are calling the worst call in the past six years of college basketball happened. On a breakaway steal from Kansas players, Nicholas Timberlake led to an almost breakaway dunk that would have put the Jayhawks up for good, but 6'5 Stanton McCrahey flew in, blocking the shot and giving the team a chance to win, until the refs called a foul that gave Timberlake two free throws and put the Jayhawks up for good. From USA Today, Kenny Smith had this to say on the broadcast. Bad call. They missed it. It happens. It shouldn't have happened in these movements. The NCAA refs continue to have issues in the March Madness tournament. Controversy in the world of baseball as Dodgers megastar Shohei Otani has evolved in what many are calling a gambling scheme. As the Dodgers have since fired Shohei's team interpreter after reports came out accusing the inter interpreter of massive theft. According to CBS Sports, the interpreter, Ipe Buzahara, had at least $4.5 million in wire transfers that were sent from Shohei Otani's bank account to a California bookmaker who was under federal investigation. Mizuhara had conversations with reporters earlier this week detailing that Otani was paying off his gambling debts. However, he later changed his story to say that Otani was unaware of any of his payments. Mizuhara claimed to have never bet, bet, never bet on baseball, and the lawyer for the bookmaker, Diane Bass, has backed up this claim. Sports betting is not legalized in California, though, and illegal gambling of any sport violates MLB rules. The MLB is gathering facts and will continue the modern situation per the league's office. Well, that's all the sports I have for you now. We'll be right back after this. Hotels helping dogs get a second chance, and strangers lend a helping hand on the road. Patrick Cornell shares these stories in today's Take a Look at This. Looking for a dog-friendly hotel for your next trip to the mountains? <coughs> what about a dog helping hotel? The park on Maine in Highlands, North Carolina is exactly that. Not only are you welcome to bring your dog, but the hotel hopes you might leave with an extra one, their foster dog in residence. Working with the local Humane Society, the hotel has been fostering dogs for years, exposing them to thousands of potential adopters. We've probably adopted 25 to 30 dogs uh, through the history of our partnership, and those dogs have gone all over the country. The latest success story? Calhoun, an eight-year-old hound mix that a couple visiting from Nashville spent time with and just couldn't leave behind. Speaking of good deeds, here's a unique one, roadside coffee delivery. When truck driver Fidel Cabrera's big rig broke down on I-80 East in Pennsylvania, he ended up waiting hours for a tow. 
To pass the time, he posted on a local traffic ranting Facebook page asking for some coffee. Much to his surprise, not one, but two good Samaritans who saw the post delivered a hot cup of joe to him. I was there five hours and, you know, it changed my whole day. It could have been different, but they made my day better. Um, and I thank them for that very much. You know, the little things go a long way for someone. Two-headed snakes are rare enough, but one that's gone through successful surgery? Wow. Tiger Lily, a western rat snake, is recovering from surgery after having her ovaries removed at the St. Louis Zoo. Two-headed snakes don't live long in the wild, but state biologists are optimistic about her chances in captivity. For Take a Look at This, I'm Patrick Cornell. Thank you, Patrick. Hannah, can we get one more look at that weather? Yes, the weather is going to be pleasant this weekend, but we are going to see some significant wind. Uh, in Roswell, we're expecting temperature of six, 76 on Friday, 71 on Saturday, and 65 on Sunday with wind through the weekend. Uh, in Santa Rosa, we're going to see slightly cooler temperatures, a high of 65 on Friday, 66 on Saturday, and 57 on Sunday with the same wind through Saturday and Sunday. Uh, in Carlsbad, we're going to be seeing a temperature of 79 degrees on Friday and it's going to be quite sunny. It's going to be cloudy on Saturday, but no wind luckily, 74 degrees. And on Sunday, you'll be seeing temperatures of 66 degrees with some significant wind. In Portales, temperatures will be quite nice with wind on Sunday, temperatures between 70 and 60 degrees. Looks like it's gonna be a very beautiful weekend and I can't wait for spring. But yes. thank you guys so much for joining us. That's all the time we have. We hope to see you next time. Good night.